Hey guys, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner and up for review today we have the SB Acoustics SB17CAC. So this is the ceramic aluminum coated version of their very popular 6 inch midwoofer. You can see the back of it here. Notice the little ribs on the cone itself. So let's look at the data. All right, we are at my website, aaronsaudiocorner.com. That's where I had this data hosted. And here are some pictures. Here's some intro, which I just copied and pasted from Mattisound. If you want to read more about the tech specs of this driver's um, makeup, then you're more than welcome to do that. But I'm gonna skip down to some of the more important data points that we care about. So per the IEC standard, using my Clipple Analyzer 2 with the LSI module, I determined that the maximum one-way linear excursion is 2.8 millimeters and that's very very low for a six inch driver but let's go down and look at some of the other things that i do like about this speaker and we'll kind of have a better understanding of how best to use this speaker frequency response the frequency response linearity is really good so this gray window indicates the plus or minus one and a half db region from the mean the mean is about 89.1 dB, which is on the higher side for sensitivity, and that is through 300 hertz to 1 kilohertz. This is the on-axis response too, by the way. And the 1.5 dB window is from about 70 hertz to about 3 kilohertz, where there's a mild breakup, but the majority of the breakup is actually pushed out a couple octaves higher than most people are going to cross a speaker of this size. And when I say that, most people are going to cross six inch midwoofers somewhere in the region from two to three kilohertz, uh, three kilohertz being the higher end because the speaker is already beaming. And what do I mean by beaming? Well, that just means that the sound is becoming more directional as you move off axis, which is indicated by these response with the 0, 15, 30 and 60 degree off axis measurements. And we can see that from the normalized response that at about three kilohertz, you're about 10 dB down. So again, most people are probably gonna cross it closer to the two kilohertz region, maybe as high as two and a half kilohertz. Uh, but within that region, this speaker is very, very linear. And let's go look at this. So the harmonic distortion, overall distortion on this speaker is really, really good through the mid range. But as you get closer to the mid bass area, you know, the 100 hertz and below region, you're gonna have more distortion uh, it's going to increase quite dramatically but with 101 db output the mid-range distortion above 200 hertz is about 0.3 percent at 100 db that's incredible that's super 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 low and when you go to 101 db the three percent thd mark is reached at about 70 percent so there's a pretty quick incline from about 200 hertz to uh or 200 hertz and below so you can see that this indicates that you're going to have to watch it as far as excursion goes. And the IMD testing, which is taking a bass tone and then playing voice tones through it, also indicate the same about the distortion. So if I fix the IMD bass tone at 44 hertz, so basically I tell this speaker to play 44 hertz and then also play 200 hertz through 6 kilohertz at in individual tones. What we can see here is that the distortion levels, the amplitude distortion, and the uh, Doppler distortion are both quite high. But if you stop that speaker and make it play only 80 hertz instead of the 44 hertz, that those distortions are mitigated considerably. And then if we go and look at this multi-tone distortion testing, which is how I test Max SPL based on a set of standards, and you can read about that here. But basically I'm saying the speaker cannot go experience more compression than 2 dB, and it cannot experience more distortion than uh, 3%. And in this test, when it's playing from 80 hertz to 1600 hertz, it uh, passes that threshold at about 100.9 dB. So basically 101 dB. And there is a very low distortion, even still at 100.9 dB. The interesting thing is when I tell it to play 40 hertz to 3200 hertz, which is probably outside the band that most people are going to play it, but it, it goes to kind of give you additional information about how a speaker behaves as it plays lower and higher in frequency, we can see that the compression is a limiting factor and it's still about the same level in uh, SPL as it was when it played the limited band from 80 hertz to 1600 hertz. Again, it's 100.9, it's the exact same level and that's not a typo. But 
remember that the distortion when it played 80 hertz to 1600 hertz was low now at the same output levels the distortion when it's playing down to 40 hertz is increased significantly i mean you go from about negative 50 to or say basically 0.3 thd 0.3 percent distortion uh, to about three percent distortion that's all the difference in playing from 40 hertz to 80 hertz i mean just that band increase the distortion that much so what does that tell you well it kind of goes into my bottom line that in my opinion this speaker is much more suited toward a two-way type system where it's crossed over to 80 hertz or 100 hertz used with a subwoofer or maybe even used as a dual uh, mid-bass mid-range type type setup so you can kind of make up for the uh, excursion deficiencies um, otherwise you could use this in a three-way as a mid-range which would be pretty darn cool but on the flip side you're going to have to deal with crossing your tweeter over lower than you would normally with a five inch mid-range and it just so happens that sb acoustics makes a five inch mid-range in this variant so i would personally recommend the five inch version of this speaker for uh, dedicated mid-range duty in a three-way speaker but overall the distortion is very very low the on axis and off axis linearity is quite high it's just not a good bass driver that's going to do it for this review. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys appreciate it. And make sure to go to my website to read more gory details about all the inner workings and the test results. A great drive unit when used within its limits. And with that said, I'm going to go. I'll talk to you all later. Peace.